What is happening, Blades? And welcome back to the Blades Ramble. We are proudly sponsored by Action Coach Sheffield and VMB Autos. Thank you to them for their support. I hope they continue the support despite the form of the team. Wow, 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 wow. What? Where do we even start? I mean, I was tempted to come on last night um, and just get it over and done with. Just vent and, yeah, it, it looks like... It's just, and then I, I was so tired. Thing is, I started at, when we've been done at Newcastle and when we've been done five before and and all this sort of stuff. I'm just so disappointed with this season. La yesterday, sitting there, and I stayed for the full thing like I do, more full me probably, but I felt sick. I felt physically sick watching this team that are, Nowhere near. It's not just because Arsenal are so good. And don't get me wrong, Arsenal are so good. We are terrible. Absolutely, you're terrible, Muriel. We were awful. Absolutely woeful. I could go through that. In fact, I'm going to go through that team and I'm going to... The, the only silver line... I'm going to have to stop myself from jumping about. I've got, again, as typical Rambo style, with no notes, I don't really know what I'm going to say because... I'm just going to speak to you guys. I'm going to read your comments. I'm going to talk to you, whoever wants to call in. I know we've got people backstage. I appreciate that. I will bring you on soon. But that team yesterday, first of all, I mean, when I were advertising to, to let you all know that I was coming on, I said that I'd seen some good points made. I've seen all sorts written and, and said. I've seen some good points made. I've seen some fair points made. I've seen some absolutely ridiculous comments made as well. And look, everybody's entitled to their opinion. That's what we're here for. That's that's what we are about as a channel. We want everybody to come on and have their say. First thing I'm going to say is please don't swear, because I know it's it's a very volatile, um, emotional time. And I understand that people are frustrated, but we, we can't this is a channel for everybody. I want people to feel comfortable watching it with the kids. But <laughs> Some of the points made, I completely disagree with, but you can still come on and say that if that's how you're feeling. I thought Wilder got it wrong yesterday. I think he sort of admitted that himself with the way he hooked Oli Norwood after 12, 15 minutes. But I could go through that team now, and the silver lining I was saying to my dad yesterday was, no matter what we've thought of these players beforehand, you know, Gus Hame as a championship cheat code, and Nell, we know how good he can go in championship. All, all these players, McAtee don't count because he's not going to be there. Before, you know, if we if we knew we were going down, there's always that sort of trepidation of, oh, well, we can't lose him and we can't lose him. And if we lose him, then that's it. We're going to really, I could, you could get rid of them all. You could get rid of them all. And I wouldn't care. That's, that's how I felt yesterday. Gerbich. Looked garbage yesterday. Absolutely woeful. I'm, look, I, I want to give the lad a chance. I want to try my best to grease the wheels with him, let him get his feet under the table. He's fighting a losing battle. But people were coming at me yesterday saying, he's no better than Wes. I can't, I can't defend him. How am I supposed to defend him if he's conceding five every week? It, it, were, it were like the Alamo yesterday coming at him, but... He didn't cover himself in glory. I thought he's, he's super glued to his line. He, he never comes for like crosses or anything like that. He doesn't command his area. I'm not impressed at all. And I know we've laid out a fee for him. It were a fairly modest fee because his contract was coming to an end at Atletico. He's not my number one. And, and I, I hope he proves me wrong. And I was, obviously, I've already been down on Wes, but... Yes, Wilder's brought him in. I can have that conversation with people. From what I understand, it were a Matt Duke recommendation. Really poor. I'm, these are going to have to go in number order, obviously, because I'm reading off a team sheet and United have now annoyed me further by listing the teams in number order rather than, you know, assume positions. Austin Trusty, I've tried. I have tried my best to like Austin Trusty, to give him a chance. He is just nowhere near the level. Lovely kid. Not a Premier League footballer, certainly not at the moment. We haven't found his best position, or if we have, then uh-oh. Um, 
left back against Saka and get don't get me wrong, Saka's class. Again, you've got to keep this in context that Arsenal are brilliant. It's just it, it were nowhere near. Absolutely nowhere near. Gus Hamer, I loved I was so excited when we signed Gus Hamer. Really excited. And I still he's proven before that there's a player in there. He has been one of the most disappointing signings we have made in recent memory for me. And I, because of the, not just, I think we got him for, a, you know, what, what were it, seven? Well, anyway, whatever the fee was, it would okay value. I, I, I wasn't like, oh, we've massively overpaid. I think it were a good signing for us. He's just not stepped up to the level, has he? He doesn't fit into this, whatever this system is. He don't fit into it. Ollie McBurney, pack your bags. Not for me. I, I've tried. I've been defending him for a long, long time. Just walking around, moping, head down, shaking his head. It's everybody else's fault. Never, ever chasing down defenders. Never chasing down. Just walking around like he's Berbatov. Just walking around. Not for me. No, not for me. Ollie Norwood, you can't, you can't criticize. Listen, listen, I don't think he's up to the level, and I haven't done for some time. Can't dig him out for yesterday, really, other than being one of the poor <laughs> crew that went 3-0 down so quickly. Jack Robinson, well, people may come at me for this. Jack Robinson is nowhere near good enough. And I, I love, I think people, well, I'm not saying he's not been our best defender this year, which says how woeful we have been overall. He is not good enough. He's not good enough for the level. The, none of them are good enough, so... Forgive me for repeating myself, but Jack Robinson has never... He, he weren't getting in our side in championship, weren't Jack Robinson? So, for him to get the captain's armband, well, it rings alarm bells for me, for, for one. And I'll just go off on a tangent slightly, because that's the way we do things, isn't it? But George Baldock comes on, second half, and yes, you can take into consideration that they've taken their foot off the gas a little bit and sort of stopped playing with us like a little play toy and just sort of sat back a little bit. I thought George Baldock played really well, really well. Didn't get one mention from Chris Wilder in post-match, which alarm bells. And when he is blatantly the man that's that's not making the difference, but sort of geeing everybody up and getting everybody up for the game, and then he takes off Anel to bring on our blaster. Great move, by the way. I thought Ollie looked very good. Oli Arblaster comes on with captain's armband and he's like, who am I giving it to? Who am I giving it to? And he says, Jack Robinson. Jack Robinson. Jack Robinson. And listen, I get Robbo gives everything for cause, tries his absolute best. But George Baldock is the only candidate for that captaincy. The only candidate. is the only one that cares on last night's performance. The only one that cares of the senior players. Really, really poor Robinson last night. Again, Jaden Bogle has never, ever been a defender. I'm sorry, we've had arguments back and forth in our WhatsApp chat about this. He, he is not fit to lace Baldock's boots on a right wing back position. Not a chance. Look, he has purple patches where he looks good. He's easy on the eye when he's in possession against weaker teams where he can get forward with a bit of flair. And this is only my opinion. He flatters to deceive. He has no idea defensively where to be. He switches off. He watches the ball. His men, Martinelli, what, not 10, not 20, 30 yards away from him. And, and he didn't know where he was on a regular basis when he got dragged across because he didn't know what was happening. As soon as George came on, look, we still conceded when George were on, but he, he shut up shop a little bit, always within sight, always looking to see where his man was. He's a defender. He knows what he's doing. We have to prioritise re-signing George Baldock. He has got to be part of this massive rebuild that we're having. Because, look, with the likes of Vinny Souza, who I'm coming on to now, I can't I can't get on board with this Vinny Souza. It's all right being a happy, hey, uh, I'm from Brazil and, you know, we all have a laugh and we all love playing in Premier League. He's not a footballer. He's not a footballer. He's an athlete. He's not a footballer. He can't. Don't know where to be. Don't track his man. He's supposed to. He's right. We were watching two teams yesterday. Obviously, very contrasting views. And my dad says to me, "You seen Declan Rice?" 
how he's everywhere, how he's breaking up play and he's just dictating front back. Isn't that what Sousa's supposed to be doing for us? Yeah, Dad, it is. That's exactly what Sousa's supposed to be doing for us. Not in this lifetime are we going to get a performance like that out of any Sousa. Listen, he had, he had a great game and I thought it was his coming of age game. I can't remember who we were against now, but might have been Wolves or it. Whoever it was, that we all raved about him. And he's just not, he's been missing ever since, hasn't he? I, I just, Tom Davis, like, I think he's still working off some of the rust. I think he's probably one of the few that will make it into our championship side because he's got a little bit about him. He's got a little bit of grit, a little bit of aggression in his play, likes a tackle, gives the ball away quite easily. But we're getting rid of Norwood, so we've got room for one of them. And McAtee's going back into him. I think he's proven to be a very good player, probably the best player in our 11 by a stretch. But McAtee is, he's been a bit of a luxury signing for us, hasn't he? If you think about, so out of, out of that 11, obviously I've not mentioned Anel for some reason, I've skipped over him, but again, a shadow of the player. You know, at one point he's just pulling his man back. When he absolutely lost possession, don't get me wrong, there were two men on an L and Bogle left him for dead. Absolutely ludicrous. But I just, I can't. out of that 11, with one loan signing in there, James McAtee, who don't quite, you know, we've tried to make him fit, don't quite fit, but very much a luxury player. We need an attacking outlet, I understand that. But he's not roll your sleeves up and get stuck in. How... And even if you say that McAtee's been a success, how appalling have our loans been this season? And that's just one element of our business that's been absolutely woeful. So then you've got Osborne that came on. I thought Osborne did okay. He tries. He's not good enough. He's not good enough for the level. You know, will he get another contract? Maybe, but only as a squad man in, in championship for me. I thought Asula looked bright when he came on. At least he's chasing the defenders down. I didn't expect him to get a brace or an hat trick, but just Hassel and Harry him and make him make a pass. Make him knock it out of play, maybe, or you know, mistime something. Just put him under pressure. That's all it is, McBurney. Just put him under pressure. Do a bit of work. Absolute car toss, man. It does my head in. Um, our blaster and Brooks. Got praise from manager, justified, absolutely right. Really, really, you know, they're both raw, aren't they? Particularly Brooks, who is more, probably more the flair player of the two. Will lose it every now and again, but something will come off. He'll make something out of nothing, which is always good to see. At least they're trying, at least they care, is, you know, where I'd go with that. It just absolutely shocking yesterday. I thought Wilder got it wrong. As I said, we four at the back. People have been crying out for four at the back. We're not good enough to play four at the back. We need to pack an extra man in there. I understand the need for an extra man in midfield to protect the defence. Well, we'll have to do that then, won't we? It's we. It's been appalling. It's been absolutely woeful um, this season. This the these these transfers that we all had held out a little bit of hope for. I'm just, I'm, I'm absolutely livid about it, to be honest. So I'm going to get into your comments and I appreciate people have been waiting. I can't, you know what I'm like once I get going. So I'll get some comments first. Sam says, we weren't good enough. We need to stop scapegoating people like Gerbic. The problem is the people in front of him, we can't do the basics. Anel should be stripped to the captaincy. Agree, Anel should be stripped to the captaincy. He's not a captain. Don't lead by example. I never see him talking to people other than complaining to the referee. Um, I wouldn't say we're scapegoating Gerbic when he's he's letting what sixteen goals in the last three or something like that. I don't know. It's up there, isn't it? Steve says the way I see it, we're simply not good enough. Is Wilder the man to lead us? Steve Cooper for me. I, I personally think Wilder's <laughs> he's been sold a dead duck, hasn't he? Really, and I don't mean the clubs tried to put wool over his eyes, but he has inherited an absolute crock. So. I think you've got to give him at least a, a try. He's done it before. I, I would back him, particularly with a bit of finance, if we're going to get that, to get it right. And he says, I think Wilder's lost the golden touch. He once had new start with a new team for me. Don't think we can trust Wilder to spend what little, if any money we get in the summer. For me, we get rid. If we keep him, he gets till Christmas up the ramble. 
Chirac, good evening, pal. Manager's not good enough, but no manager will be good enough under this ownership. So I ask you, Jimmy, who's to blame for constantly getting hammered every week? CW or Abdullah or both? Well, it's not just people behind the scenes, is it? They, they are absolutely culpable. Absolutely, they are. They take a share in the blame. I think Wilder came out and said it in his interview where he takes responsibility for it, and he should because he's part of it. The Prince has not had enough funds to finance the club and he's actively trying to sell. Whether you take that or you don't, that's the situation we're in. So there's not been enough money to make the squad competitive in the league. I think all parties have sort of held up to that. The players do not look like they give a monkey's and I get that they're beaten and they're done, but it's not acceptable. Not for our club. We don't mind you not being good enough, but you've got to you've got to put it in, and they're, they're not. What makes Wilder the right man for the job next season? Results have been on a par, if not worse than under Hecky. Football is a results business. Wilder constantly going on about performances, though. Yeah, I understand that. I understand people that have that opinion. I think he's the right man, and it's not just because he gets the club. I've, I've had that thrown at me as well before. Oh. Do you, They've they've brought up that uh, there's several people commented today because people just love to. At the problem we've got here, and I'm sorry to ramble and I'm sorry to rant, but this is what we're here for, and you'll all have your chance as well. I appreciate the people waiting. But the the big problem that we've got here is he talked about it not being toxic. I think we're teetering on it a little bit because it's the old I were right. He's crap. He's to blame. This one's to blame. People cannot wait to turn on each other and say, told you Wilder were crap. Told you the Prince were no good. Told you this. Told you this. Should have been Eki. Should it, we should sack the lot until until this. Two weeks ago, everybody were, were happy with Prince. After Wolves and that, everybody were, I got so many positive messages. And I'm not saying people flip-flop because they don't particularly. But it brings the worst out in people. People have been waiting t- for this to happen so that, and like have a pop at me, for example, on this, when I put, we've got our club back because we reappointed Chris Wilder, I genuinely felt that. And I still think longer term, he is the right man to take us forward. It's just my opinion. He's done it before. And I think he's with us. He's, he's done it, hasn't he? He's done it in the, below the Premier League and even for a season in the Premier League. But below, he's, he took us in League One where we were absolutely on our backside. No leaders, no, the squad was broken completely. There was no, it brought everything together. It, it brought everything together, built it from scratch pretty much. And now he's got a little bit of a budget, not a massive budget as we know, but it is going to be a powerful club in, in the championship and the chance to sort of have a, a clear, a clean start. I, I think he's the man for me. We at least give him a go. Still think we need to strengthen goalkeeper, bring Victor in and let him and Gervich fight out for the number one. Won't be against that at all. Let Wes and Davis go, hopefully. Any updates on any more contracts being signed? No, pal, not at the minute. Not at the minute. There's, it's stalling, if anything, with certain players. But on yesterday's performance, do you care? Because I don't. I'll read Danny Boys and then I'll get to our first call. So uh, Danny says, hi, Jimmy, on the rant again. What was that we saw last night? Another capitulation by disinterested players for a team. Those fans expect you to die for three points. It's become a joke now. Wilder hasn't improved anything apart from actually sending a player past the halfway line now and again, which Eki didn't do at all. I don't expect to win every game, Jimmy, but come on, at least put some effort in these games. You're playing for a team whose major fan base are working class people. These players earn more in a week than most earn in a year for kicking a bag of wind about. We've always took pride in who we are and where we come from, but this trollop I've just seen on that Bramall Lane pitch is absolutely disgusting. Especially when we as fans expect a lot better for what we fork out to watch and support our team. One minute, Danny, I didn't realise it was this long, mate, to be fair, but I'll keep going. Um, uh, last night deserved to start the next game. I'll drop most of midfield like Souza and Norwood and stick our blaster and Brooks in. We can't do it. Uh, we need fresh ideas, and I hate to say it now, it's looking like he's not got it in him to do it. I like Wilder, I respect him as a fan and as a manager, but we can't keep going on like this. Prince has got to go. The fans have got to be united and show before the game, the next game, that we don't want him him here anymore. This season has destroyed our identity. I completely agree with that. It's destroyed our confidence and it's destroying us, the fan base. Something's got to give Jimmy and the Prince packing his bags has got to be a start. Fresh start next season with complete new ownership and changes in management and personnel has got to happen. I'm a blade. I'm always a blade and I'll never give up on being a proud blade. Love your work, Jimmy. Stay proud being a blade. Up the blades. Top man, thank you, Danny. I 
I think you're actually waiting in comments to speak. But first up, I'm going to pull in. Stevie. Hi, yeah. Sorry to keep you waiting, mate. How are you doing? Okay, I'm good. How are you? You seem upset. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to keep a lid on it, to be honest, pal, but it's not easy. No, it's not easy. Funny. Um, it's not. It's really not. Um, but I'm going to try and be really positive. Go for it, mate. Inject yeah. a bit of positivity into us if you can. I'll do, I'll do my best because, like, I feel... I mean, I, I I hated watching it yesterday. I, I do you know I finished work. I, I work five minutes away from my house, so I walked back last night. I put the kettle on. I put the heating on, and already on the Ramblers group because you get updates on the Ramblers group before you get them on Sky. Yeah, you do. Yeah, already, you do. Well, and I was like, I've not even been home yet. What's going on? What's going on? And, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to, if it's all right, I'm going to try and tell you how I see things because it's actually a bit positive. But Okay, mate. Go for it. I think that, like, the reason why we're successful, the reason why Wilder took us from 17th in League One all the way up to 9th in the Premier League was based on this genius system where there was this lightning in the bottle. A lot of things happened at the same time. We had the personnel to do it, and then we practiced it week in, week out, and no one could figure it out. Yep. And then as soon as the players like Jack O'Connell got injured or other teams sort of got wise to it, it didn't work as much anymore. Then we had COVID. And one of the really worrying things about Wilder in the COVID season for me, because, listen, I fucking – oh, sorry. I loved – Chris Wilder there. I think he's class. I'm so sorry I did that, Jimmy. But it's not having a vocabulary. Go on, mate. I'm gonna get it. One of the things that I love about Chris Wilder is what he did in some of the best moments I've ever had as a Sheffield United fan was that. But at the end of the COVID season, we were one of the worst sports teams in any sports that had ever played because we'd lost 19 on the bounce or whatever it was. Do you know what I mean? It was it was ridiculous. Yeah. Everybody was slagging us off like they are right now. And my criticisms of, of Chris Wilder then were that he had turned on the fans in quite a major way. He had turned on the owners. He was being... I, I couldn't see why he was digging players out. He called them League One. He called the fans PlayStation managers. Or oh, if, you, if you think it's easy, you do it then. And I don't think he did very well when he had the big budget. And I know that's been talked about a lot. So I don't really want to debate that. But then those players left and we had no system. And what we've been doing for the past three years is trying to find this identity. We tried Slav. Slav had an identity of the wingers and that, but we didn't have the personnel for it. So, of course, it's not going to work. Then Hecky came in. And, you know, I mean, I think I think on the Ramblers group, everyone thinks I'm sort of... I love Hecky. It's not that I love Hecky. Mm -hmm. It's the fact that I think I, I don't really agree with this revisionist stance that Hecky was really bad because the things he was dealing with, we spent all that money and the club could have gone under at any point. We had, was it the under pitch heating that got turned off? We couldn't afford player installments. We could have really, if things had gone the wrong way and we didn't get some results or Njai got injured, something like that, it could have been really, really bad. But despite yeah. that, Hecky pulled us up from where Slav got us. And in that first season, there was that mad injury crisis where we had three number 10s. We had Berger and Jai and Morgan Gibbs-White playing in that weird number 10 because we had no strikers. Yeah, but it became really successful. And it feels like what's happened in the past couple of years, two, three years, has been constant. All right, we'll adapt on the short term because we've got all these problems. Adapt, 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 adapt. So we've not got that system anymore. And then we've got this position where we lose 8-0 to Newcastle. We've been promoted. and Right, sorry, forget the Newcastle bit. We've been promoted and we've we've got this opportunity now to clear the debt and put us on good financial footing. And I think if you yeah. look back, I, would, I, I don't know if you want to do this, but if you look back to the summer, you'll notice that most of the chat then, whether it was on the S2 forum, whether it was on YouTube channels, most of the Sheffield United commentary was, ah, we're making a decision to be a sustainable club now. We're putting things in place. We want category one. And our transfers with... I think everybody knew that the transfers was with that in mind. Get yeah, the Ian Giant Burger thing leaving. That was that was that happened. But everybody was like, oh, do you know what? We've been looking abroad. We found an L, so maybe this Traore person's really good, etc. 
And the fan base in general was quite happy with how things were being run. And then we started playing football. And the thing I've always tried to hold on to, but the thing I've always tried to hold on to is, and and it's really hard, is no matter how hard it gets, this was the plan. And you've got a YouTube channel. You know how it is. I run a business. For anyone who, do you know what I mean? You've got to do sometimes. Things get really hard before they get easier. And we are in a transition period now where we've lost the system. We've been fighting against short-term battles. And now we've got to regroup. And unfortunately, we've realized this as things have just gotten really bad. But we've done it before. We're probably going to go, well, we are going to go down. We just have to do it again. Do I think Wilder's the man to do it? No. However, he's, he's changed tactics halfway through a game. He never did that in the COVID system. He's, he, he doesn't seem angry at the fans. And I wonder if it's because he's learned a lesson. Last night, I put on the Ramblers group, it felt like he was grieving last night. And I think he probably is because he's, he's not going to have the... The car of the team. Himself, he, 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 mm. he probably got as hopeful as we did. And I, I was I was against bringing Wilder back because I thought, no, leave your legacy mm. where it is. I don't think any manager in the world could dig us out of this. Mm. Heck, he had to go after the Burnley match. But it's really hard. And it's hard because the media are sort of painting us out to be the worst team that's ever lived. We're on the same points as Burnley. And what's happening is we're scraping results and getting points. In those games, it's close. But then when we lose, we absolutely capitulate. And I want to finish above Burnley. That would be nice. I'm quite looking forward to watching Tuesday matches in the Championship next year. But we've yeah. been relegated before when apparently we were the worst sports team in ever, any sport that I'd ever played, mate. Um, I think we can do it again. I don't know if Chris Wilder's like the man for men more. Far more qualified than I am. Um, but as you say, everyone's allowed their opinion. I just hope people stay friendly and realise that whether we like it or not, this was the plan. It just really hurts to watch it. Yeah. No, very good points, mate. Very good points. I think you're right in what you say. We have we, short memories, isn't it? We, we have been in a worse position in a lot of ways, certainly financially and... Yeah. I'm not saying this. We've always had the assets to fall back on, which I don't think are at the same level. Um, cause, but there's a huge rebuild job on now, and it's just whether we trust him to be the right man. If you don't think it's Wilder, I'm going to let you go in a minute, Steve. But because you've said you don't think Wilder's the man, who, who is? Who, any names at all? I'm not. I don't mean to put you on the spot there, but well, no, no. It's, I've thought about it. Um, I haven't got any names for you. I'll be completely honest because I think that. Like like I said on that round table when we were talking about whether do we get Hecky in, I didn't have any names then because it's far, far bigger than a person. And I think this what what has to happen is there's so many variables as well. If Prince Abdullah sells the club, then you have maybe a bigger budget. Like I don't yeah. have any names, but I, I, I just want to make one more point and then I'll, I'll let you get on to the other callers. Go for it, mate. Go for and it. And the point is, is that like we could have shot our shot and spent 150 million quid and got an unsustainable weight and really had a go at it. We really could have done that. Imagine if we were in the position Burnley are now and then we'd spent all of that money. We would be in a far, far worse position. Maybe not emotionally because everyone's feeling like it's the end of the world right now. But yeah. we will have a club in the next five years and that's what I was worried about this time last year. Absolutely. No, it's a great point. I mean, you, you, you get the assets that come along with those purchases and that big spend. So that would be a little bit of a counter to that. But we've we've also done that before with players like Rian Brewster and you d they don't retain the value. Some no, of them, no, it's certainly about, not performing. Mate, we're talking this season about not being able to keep Hamer and Souza. Like, like, we're talking about these assets that we don't think are good enough right now, but especially based on last night. And we're worried yeah. about losing them. Like those assets would go anyway. Like it, yeah. I just, I'm just trying to look at the positives. And I think that we've done it before. We'll do it again. I just, whether Wild is the right man or not, I don't think that's the question to ask. I just think, what, what can we do in the championship next year if all the variables like the budgets we've got stay the same? How can we improve there? Because moaning about, we can't control, I mean, we can't control much, but we can't control whether Prince Abdullah gets a buyer. We can't control his decision on the manager. So my question to anybody about to sort of comment or about to speak, with the budget and the manager and the 
the uh, if you were Prince Abdullah or you were Chris Wilder, what would you do now? Good question. Good question. We'll see how people answer it. Stevie Boy, thank you for starting us off, pal. Very much appreciated. I'll see you, see you later, buddy. Hey, mate. Bye. Bye. Cheers, Steve. Appreciate that, mate. Jump into a couple more comments before the next caller. Uh, Seb says, hope you and your family are well, Jimmy. They are. Thank you, mate. I hope you are too. It's just not our year at all. Until the 3-1 loss at home against Bournemouth, I was all for hecky staying. My summer solutions would be to get Brewer and Diaz on a perm. I like the Barnsley striker, Cole. Devante Cole, who's top scorer in League One, another two midfielders and two defenders. Uh, if the club could generate £40 million by selling the Deadwood and a nail and Archer, who would you buy with the money? So Archer is not going to go, not going to stay. Um, he's automatically going back to Villa. That's part of the, the original deal. Um, and Nell, I think, will definitely go. It just Now it's just a case of how much we can get for these massively underperforming players. I think Vinny Souza will go. Can't see him playing in the championship. Um, I'd like to think we can keep Gus Hamer. I think he, he may he, his potential to come good. Who would I buy? I think Darren Smith put on an interesting comment today on um, on Twitter that if we could get Archer back on a loan to buy, then that would be the ideal for me because we know he can do it in Premier League. I know people think I've got this obsession about Cameron Archer. You're probably right. I don't think he's been given the appropriate uh, tools necessarily. Listen, I don't think he's done his bit either. But being played out on the left, being played up front on your own when you've clearly massively outperformed in a, a two, you, you're notorious for being successful in a partnership. We've just not given him that opportunity. So Archer would be the one. The other one is clearly, for me, a goalkeeper that I still don't think we've got right in Gerbic. I think we'll definitely need to shore up that there's so much to do. So much to do, but striker and goalkeeper for me. And then then really focusing on sorting out that defence. Loads to do, pal. But thank you for your comment. Mr V, after another humiliating slaughter, the club I've supported for 64 years now needs a complete overhaul. That means no more. Bogle, Trusty, Norwood, Wes, Brewster and Nell, they've all given up and have to go. Danny Boy says, add a like. Thank you, pal. Very much appreciated. Dean says... I haven't been able to compete all season in this division. It's getting a bit embarrassing now. Massive changes throughout the club, needed from ownership to management throughout the playing staff. Jimmy, beggars can't be choosers. Our team is rubbish. We have to play as many youth as possible now. Our future depends on it. With an owner like we have spending note, we have to play all the youth now. Okay. Thank you, Chirac. It's a shame, says Al. We didn't have a few more players of class because the league table is still on our side. That's true. But even I think with a good run, it's just too much. Anyway, let's focus on being above Burnley. Paul says, still gutted. My stomach's in knots. Where's the passion? Where's the fire? Barring a major miracle, we're down. But for God's sake, let's at least make a fist of it from a blade in Spain. Top man, Paul. Top man. Al says, bring in our blaster and the youngsters now. And mate, our blaster, the youngest captain ever. Why not? John says the team is terrible. Wilder is out of ideas. And unfortunately, Bramall Lane isn't the tough day out it used to be. Create Had to create an atmosphere uh, when we're watching this dross week in, week out. Hashtag rebuild. Get Blaster, Brooksy and Co out playing and fighting for the badge. Absolutely right. Nigel, before I go to his next caller, says, question, after the last run of games, are the Blades any better than they were under Hecke? The team is shot full stop. A nil throwing the player to the ground just shows he's lost it. Robbo for skipper. Robbo's not my skipper, but I understand why people would. In terms of are we better than we were under Hecke, you have to say, no, we're not. We're not. I think he started off a little spark. We had a little bit of something about us more than Hecke. And I think with Hecke, we were just full out, all out defence, weren't we? And just try and shut up shop. But Wilder... It's not improved results-wise, has it? It doesn't mean I don't think he's not the man, but straight answer to a straight question. I'm going to bring in our next um, caller now, Danny Boy. How's it going, pal? I'm all right, mate. How are you sound, Jimmy? I'm all right, mate. I'm all right. <laughs> I'm all right. It's cathartic speaking to you a lot. So I know, How mate. are you I... feeling, pal? Uh, well, especially after last night's result, mate. Oof, Dan Haunted, like probably another 50,000 blades out there. Know, you know... know. It's getting regular every week, this now capitulation, you know. Once first one goes in, you know that this is going to be a second, there's going to be a third. There's no confidence in squad whatsoever. The transfer's been brought in, 
by the club, just not good enough. The only transfer that I would actually keep, Jimmy, would probably be Aimer for next season. Souza yeah. might just had one, two decent games while he's been here. Every other match, outplayed, outfought, just not interested in badge. You know, look at the first season when we went up from League One to Championship, then went straight up to Premier League. Every player, mm. what Wilder brought in, fought for the badge, fought for the club. Yeah. Just nothing like that now, mate. Just there's no identity, is there? There's no, no, no the end. There's, there's nothing. There's no sort of collective sort of pride in, in you know, the team. Exactly. You, you look at somebody like Luton, who I don't think they're much better than us man for man. I'm not saying they're not better than us, but I'm, I don't think they're much better. They've got that collective, you know, us against the world attitude that we've had before. What, what, what we had, Jimmy. Yeah, exactly. They're yeah, doing we near it. what we did back then. You know, yeah, they're a right. unit, they're solid. They had one or two, added one or two players to improve them. Yeah. Look, look at Barkley. They've got Barkley. Who would ever thought that he would have gone to um, Luton, you know? And look yeah. how much differences he's done to that club. I know. So, so, you know what I mean? It's like, why can't we pick players up like that? You know, what costs nothing, you know? Yeah, he might be on fifty, sixty thousand pounds a week. Why can't we pay that instead of a fee? Get quality yeah. players what can basically do the job. We're just bringing these unknowns in, what we think that can do the job, which obviously can't. Hence where we are in the league, Jimmy. I agree, mate. What's your uh, what's your thoughts on manager? Because I think um, <laughs> I'm a big yeah. Wilder fan. You know, I had um, obviously he left the first time on bad terms. You know, threw toys out at Pram. You yeah. know what he did for us from League One to Premier League. You know, is is a legend at, at the lane. You know, is always will be a legend. And um, but I think now he's not really improved anything. I think his tactics are inept. I think who runs the team, I think it's got to be Nilly. You know, he sets the team up. He coaches the team. I just think Wilder personally is just the face. I really do. Right. I think I think Nilly's just as much to blame because I think he's just out of ideas. I think somebody new needs to come in maybe for next season. I can't really see Wilder going because obviously he's got another year on his contract. But I think... My personal view is, I think, end of season, I think he should walk. I think somebody new should come in. New ideas, new identity. Take us back up, you know. He'll have a bit of money to spend. Maybe not the millions that, obviously, if we stayed in the league, would give us. But I think in that league, when we do go down, I think we can compete, especially for some of them young, hungry players, such as your Jack Clarks. Your... Look, look at Coventry tonight, you know, that... By half yeah. time, four or five, and the four or five nil up against Rotherham. I know it's only Rotherham, no disrespect to them, but they've got a young core squad. O'Hare, O'Hare, sorry, O'Hare, you know, a good yeah. young team. What basically know what they're doing, they're playing for a manager such as Robbins. I think Robbins is the most underrated manager in the league for the what underrated. he's done, yeah, for especially for Coventry, you know, for the constrictions what they've had. They nearly lost the ground. They, they went into nearly went into administration, and for punching above the weight, what they're doing now for the players they've got, you know, you've got to take your hats off to them, and that's something that we need. Absolutely right, Danny. Thank you, pal. Really appreciate that. No nice problem, you. Jimmy. First time uh, you've come on, ain't it? Appreciate it, is, it, mate. And hopefully, I'll be on again, mate. I've really enjoyed yeah, mate, it. Yeah, sure and, mate. And your channel's fantastic, mate. I'm tuning in every you, week. Mate. And Thank keep you. it up, mate. Eh? All right, Cheers, all buddy. the best. Appreciate it. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers, Danny. Much appreciated, pal. Um, Dad says we took some right hammer at work. <laughs> Minus 50 and counting. Just good. Can't say anything else. Absolutely. All the blades up there. Ramble. Um, Chip boy having a little... <coughs> would never happen under Wilder. What was he thinking? Putting trusty left back. It, didn't, it just didn't work, did it? Didn't work. I weren't, I weren't a fan. We're not a shambles at the moment, says Kristen, and the laughing stock of the football world. Not much more he can get out of this squad, I'm afraid. Certainly, it's been a blade at the moment. Absolutely right. For me, planning starts now. Think long term. Look at the recruitment, the injuries. Keep on getting these. This needs to improve. Also, now is a great chance to clear the dead wood and start again for next season. For those of you that follow Darren on on Twitter, and I know I appreciate he splits opinion because particularly at sensitive times like this. 
and he's seen as an ally to the prince. And some may see, see me as that because we've had him on the channel and things. He doesn't, you know, he's seen as, you know, leaning one particular way. But he has sort of intimated that we will be looking at significantly improving the medical and the scouting departments going forward, which is music to my ears, to be honest. I think those are areas that we've long struggled in, particularly the medical longer term. I was talking to somebody today, you think back to injuries like Ender Stevens, obviously Jack O'Connell's the massive one. The scouting, we seem to be okay at championship level and below. It, it's when Once we get to the Premier League, we've no idea on how to reinforce what we've already got. And it's, we, we can't bridge the gap, obviously. Lyndon says, let's blame the manager's game. Nothing will change. And it, till a decent owner that money gets for decent, that has money for decent players. Uh, no good changing the manager. Still think Wilder gets it right long term. I do too. Also think we'll have a decent budget to rebuild next season. It's not all doom and gloom. And expe I'm expecting us to push on next season. Rob says, uh, get relegated, sell valuable assets and then do a Sunderland and invest in some talent from the Premier League Championship and across Europe if possible. When you said do a Sunderland, I thought you meant go, go straight back down. <laughs> Sunderland are known for buying talent on the cheap, so why can't we? Nigel says it's going to take two seasons to get over this. The contract need, need to be based on a performance-related basis. I don't know in a year what some of this lot get a week and I'm fighting for my... Up to 6% bonus. Absolutely right, mate. They don't live in real world, do they? And I know it's all relative and it's sort of a bit of a bubble, the football world, and we're all talking about it. We all love it. That's why they they earn the amounts that they do, but they need to earn that money, don't they? Not just be paid it. They need to be earning it. Game plan last night and the fact a few games has been, and the last few games, I, in fact, the last few games has been shocking. Right? There weren't a game plan, were there? Well, I think... When I listened out way back, you were saying, look, this is what we did against Liverpool. We went four at the back against Liverpool and it it worked okay. And I understand that, but that was there was a little bit of shock value in that for me as well because I think everybody expected him to be 3-5-2. We obviously had the new manager bounce at that stage. We still lost the game. Um, but it's, it's, it's Arsenal, the form team in the league. Bill says, it's the worst season I've ever had to endure in 60 years watching United. I've never known such a gutless, spineless team. United in the top tier. It's totally not unacceptable. It's not, not acceptable, is it, pal? Not at all. Let's put things in perspective, says Rob. Rice costs more than our match day squad until we get some financial investment and we won't be able to complete, compete in the Prem. Even Don Gibbons' season wasn't this bad and that's the lowest in United history. But well said, Rob. Well said, I agree with that. Um, RJH says that's just the Chef United way I know a YouTube channel that sounds a bit like that uh, we build, we expose, we sell that relates to David Brooks free transfer from Man City a couple of seasons in our youth ranks promoted to the team and sold at 12 million Illiman dies another example of that isn't he, as well well we've done it with several youth prospects let's be right uh, Jamal, good evening Jimmy you're my player of the season showing up every week up the ramble <laughs> thank you <laughs> Oh, top man, top man. Uh, evening, Ricky. Good evening, pal. Wayne, I don't want CW or to go or get sacked, but no manager would normally survive these last four home games. Only team in all the English leagues. John says, good morning from Australia, Jimmy. I hate to say it, but we are the blunts, not the blades. Oh, my word. Scotty says, the Telegraph are reporting the club are planning a massive club clear out in the summer with up to 15 out of contract. Absolutely right, mate. We've been talking about it for a while, haven't we? That is absolutely true. Don't even go anywhere. Don't even go anymore, says Mark. Can't be bothered with watching rubbish. Abject performances, got better things to do. Anyone who sat through that last night needs a GP, needs a GP appointment. Mark, one of our ramblers. Can't see your logo, but I know you're a rambler, top man. Um, I agree with Mr. Vancouver. Would not replace so many players and... I would not replace so many players, I think you mean by that, is don't renew certain contracts, but look on the bright side, another game less to watch this garbage. Norwood, no swearing, absolutely right. Stu says, garbage, team packed full of defenders who don't mark or put tackles in. We offered absolutely nothing going forward. No control of the ball, no creativity and no pace up front. Yeah, bang on, to be fair. I'm going to welcome our next caller in now. 
It's the man, the myth, the legend, the man mountain. How's it going, pal? I'm here for me therapy. Oh, mate. Mate, okay. I'm just going to lie down now. You're going to talk to me about how it's all going to be all right. Be no, all right. I just, um, I don't know. Uh, I got, uh, well, you spoke about how you felt about it. And uh, I was, I was numb last night. I was absolutely numb on the set watching that. Um, I, my lad was angling to stay up to watch the full game and uh, his mum was like, oh no, we'll have to go up at half time. I says, I says to him, if Sheffield United are winning, mate, you can stay up. And he was like, oh yes, brilliant. And I thought, gosh, to have that youthful enthusiasm, it was uh, it was, it was, was something else. But anyway. So, full story though, he tried it on, didn't he? Didn't he come down with, um, you sent me a picture, he's come down with Alt Gear on, anti saying, we've got yeah, a support team. Yes, so, so this is this is what we this is what we need. So at three nil, yeah. fifteen minutes in, he goes he goes. Hang on, and he runs upstairs, grabs all his gear, puts his hat on, his scarf on, his two teddies, everything else. He brings his uh, brings his duvet down, Sheffield United on it on his duvet, and he goes, "Come on, Dad, we really need to support our team." And I just went, "Oh my God, mate." You're my hero. Do you know what I mean? So, so far, you can far, stay up now. You can stay up, mate. Well done. Well done, Ronnie. Right. No, but um, no, because wife jumped, wife ducked her head in, and I was just sat there at five nil, just like it's not going well. Yeah. I went, no, no, no. I, I was, I felt numb. I felt honestly, I felt numb because I, de- I think we'd already said this was this this was wasn't unexpected. I, I don't think this no. was a big big surprise, um, and that's why I sort of protect myself and protect my own brain and heart because I'm just, I just kind of, I've kind of been resigned to this for a long time now. I think that the the previous games, obviously Newcastle was bad, but they're a good team. Arsenal, let's have it right. And, and it's not an excuse for what happened. And I'll go through the goals in a minute because I, I have to go through them. Um, but they're, Arsenal are a top team. They're, they're going to be there or thereabouts Great. in the Champions League. In the really? Premier League, they could, they could, they could still, they could this season. It feels different to last. They could hang on and, and and take Man City, the best team in the world, widely acknowledged, and go and beat them to the title. Yeah, they could. Based on based on their current form, if they can keep going for another ten games, they're in with a serious serious shout. Because I don't see many teams beating them at this point. That does not excuse what we saw from our team because. I think someone's, I heard somebody say it on, well, I was listening to the reaction on Sky, and they said, if you were a League One team or a championship team that drew a Premier League big team in the in the cup, you'd expect yeah. to compete better than Sheffield United have, have, have done today. I think it was Jamie Carragher was, was giving it that. And I was like, you're probably right. You know, you, you expect to go and put it all out there and leave it, leave it all, on, all on the pitch. Um. I have to say, I think the ones against Burnley and uh, Bournemouth, even though it wasn't the massive defeat, the gap between the sides there, and they're supposed to be the sides that we are supposed to be in the mixer with. They, they for me, were bigger, bigger yeah. disappointments than last night. I don't, I didn't, I didn't yeah. expect anything out of the game. I didn't speak to one blade who did. I thought anything that anyone who insinuated we were going to get a sniff, were doing it tongue, tongue in cheek. Sean in pub beforehand. I'll call you out, Sean. Sean, we're going to get some it tonight. We're going to get some it tonight. No way, mate. No way. Yeah, my dad said the same, pal. He said the Bournemouth game hurt the most because we were absolutely outclassed by a team that we're supposed to be close to. But I completely yeah. get what you're saying. Completely yeah. get it. So as soon as the first one goes in, which, by the way, I was watching the first three minutes, I thought we could have been two down. I, I was like... That is looking very easy to, to get through. Very, very easy. I was like, that's a misplaced pass. They could be two up here. We looked and, shell-shocked, didn't we? We looked absolutely shell-shocked. I know. And my, other, my, my big thing is the defending. And I've been banging on about it all season. All season, talking about Jackie Robinson being a sub in the championship is now our stalwart defender. And he still is for me, I have to say. He is. I know you don't, I know you've dug him out there, but yeah. Um yeah. we've we've got as long as we don't know where I live. I'm all right. We were, we, we were begging for Osborne on, which in the championship we were like, Osborne's not good enough. <laughs> we had Bo, Bogle playing who we knew can't defend. We've known for a long time. He has the odd game, but he's we know he can. He's our second yeah. choice right back. And 
I mean, I was looking at that defence going, oh, dearie me. And and it all started off, Vinny Souza is tracking Martin Odegaard. Martin Odegaard gets wrong side of Vinny Souza and walks into a, a three-metre space where none of yep. our defenders are. At that point, we had six defenders in the box. They had two guys to cut it back to. No one closed down, no one pressing, no one reacting, nothing. And and I said, that's Shamble. criminal. The next one, when you isolate a centre-back with uh, quite arguably one of the most dangerous wingers on the planet, and yes. you go, do you know what we'll do, Austin? We'll leave you out there. None of us are going to come across and help you at any point. I remember watching us at Wembley and watching us marshal Man City. Yeah, we lost the game, but we had two players Double doubling up on air, on, yeah. on their wingers because we were scared to death. And do you know what? We were in that game. If we'd have had a bit more about us, we were in that game. And, well, we weren't, but we were. We, 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 we didn't get embarrassed. We were anyway. we, were, weren't we? We, were, we were at least showing up and giving yeah, it a go. We had a, game, we had a game plan and it looked good. Yeah. You know, and I know that was, I know that was Hecky and I'm not, I'm not, I don't begrudge Hecky that, um, that, that performance and, you know, his promotion and the successes that he had. The third goal, we had six defenders in. Martinelli has the ball. He saunters into our box. He plays a quick one-two. I can't, I can't but laugh. I've got to and laugh that, because I know I can cry. He plays a one-two with a guy who's about three yards away from him and slots it. Now, the thing that annoyed, that annoyed me with this annoyed me the most. And you've just mentioned an L on the fourth goal, trying to basically kill somebody on the way yeah. through to try. I don't know if he was trying to curry favour with the fans at that point. I thought it was pathetic, ridiculous yeah. what he was doing. He should have been captain. booked for it. Captain. But, but he, yeah, captain, yeah. But when that shot comes in, he's three, three yards away and he turns his back. He turns sideways. He looks away from the ball because he's scared of getting hit by the ball. And it ricochets off him and beats Gerbic. And I and and I and I've and I've watched it and I'm like, you cannot do that. You cannot do that to our supporters. You you if you get one in the in the in the cream crackers, so be it. Do you know throw your body in? And this is where your criticism of Robinson, I have to, I have to say. He is the only one, when things go wrong, who turns round. And he's the only one trying, at times, Jimmy, to put his body on the line for us. Even when the sick fungus in, he's the only one trying to throw his body in front of it. On that sixth goal, we had five players stood between the guy who shoots and the goal. Robinson's the only one who slides. For, slides. Yeah, I get it. I don't, I don't doubt he's, his attitude. He's the only one who gives a monkeys, mate, and that and that is the truth. In that, and maybe George when he's when he's yeah, there. I'd and he's give George it. Yeah, 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 George as well. But Robinson is the only one. And yes, we knew we knew he wasn't good enough. We knew he wasn't good enough in the championship. He wasn't good enough to get promoted out of the championship. But he's still our best defender at this point. So I have to, I have to, I have to go that. But if we can't track a runner, if we can't stay touch tight to people. How are we supposed to defend? Doesn't matter four at the back, five at the back, ten at the back. If you don't close men down in the box, these guys pass the ball and they shoot first time shots. They know how to score goals. You have to be touch tight. You have to be making an effort to get in front of that ball. And they are, they, they they are behaving like children. And the fact that they're professional footballers and not Sunday league footballers, okay, to be a professional footballer in my brain. You have to be determined. You have to be. You have to show an attitude. You have to be brave. You have to. You, you have to be a winner. You got to fight. You can't. You can't yeah. just turn up and be a pro. You've. You've got to be way better than a, than another thousand people who want your job, right? These lads do not look like professional football players, and we've spoken about recruitment, and we can stop blaming. Rec we we can put it in as as a factor, but we got we can't keep blaming stuff that. If these lads are not going to put their bodies on the line for our club, then I agree with a lot of the callers who've said, start again, because the yeah. recruitment of these guys is not good enough. Sheffield United, the team that I know, the team that I love, right? 
we've been brought up on teams with Michael Brown, Stuart McCall, you know, Paddy Kane, Chris, we Morgan. Had Chris, Chris Morgan. We had we had guys who were who epitomised the club, the character, fight, body, like bodies, like Billy, like, Sharp. Billy Sharp, yeah, exactly. Kiss the badge, punch the sky, fight. And all of these lads, other than the odd, the odd one, have given in. They've given in. They, I'll tell you something. Anel's face when that third and fourth goal goes in, he looks like a he looks like a naughty kid who's been caught nicking sweets. He is honestly hiding the biggest flake ever. I've never seen anything like it. A lad of his ability. The game he had last week at Wolves, we were we were saying. That's probably Anel's best game. He put his body where he's on the line. He went for the, he, he tried to block things. He worked hard. Honestly, he was a joke, a joke. And for me, if you're a professional, you're playing the best team in the land or one of the best teams in the land on the Sky's cameras, you're playing for your career. That said everything about him as a character. Honestly, I was fuming with him yesterday. I couldn't believe he turned his body sideways. And I think that's, and I think that we can say whatever we want. There were times in that game, right, where we had, they had three in the box. The fact that Saka gets all the way to the edge of our six yard line without mm -hmm. anyone coming across to help him out. We had four guys in, in the line of the goal. And it was one of them that scored it in, in Bogle. He put the ball in. There's four of them stood. In the goal line, nobody's moved across. You can't, you can't coach. You can, I don't know with, with professionals. That ain't a coaching point. You can't go on the on the on the on the thing. And go. Oh well, you should be covering now if he gets by by him. He's always it's getting by him. It's a desire, isn't it, to get there? You've got to make a decision it's as a natural it. defender. A natural defender has got to make a decision to go and help your mate. Not one of them are helping each other out. Not one of them. It's awful. It's awful. And and I think we need to start again. And I, and I think that people calling for Wilder, I get why there was a mistake that was made. I think McBurney was a massive tactical faux pas. Um, yeah, I was watching Henry. the analysis. Henri said it, and I, and I put it in the group as well. Arsenal were able to flood our box with, with, with attacking players because they left Gabriel stood up front with Ollie McBurney. And he said, and, and he's, he called him out, um, Thierry Henry, he said, we know who's getting the ball if it comes anywhere near him, because Gabriel's yeah, going to be bigger, bigger and stronger. If they knock it into a space, Gabriel wins the race. All the defenders knew, with Ollie McBurney on that pitch, that they could go wherever they wanted. Kiwi all was playing as a left winger. We had Ben White, who scored a goal. He's never scored a goal in his life. We had defenders joining in on the edge of the box, trying to get the goal, because not they're not, not going to score anywhere else. It was embarrassing. And he had Will Asula, who he brought on. And I have to say, you know, Will Asula, if he's nothing else, is a pain in the bun to mark. He's fast. He works hard. He'll run a channel. He'll give yeah. he'll give 1v1. He'll give a defender a nightmare because he is quick. Yeah. So why was Ollie McBurney put on that pitch to start that game? It's a poor call, isn't it? And, and one thing that does sort of concern me with Wilder a little bit, maybe that's not the right way of putting it, but... He's, he appears to be a huge McBurney fan. I don't know whether that's just the rhetoric that he likes to put out there, but I don't see it. I don't. I do not see the appeal with McBurney at all. I've tried my best to stay neutral on it. My dad, everybody knows my dad's opinion on it, so I've had that in my ear all the time. But and it, that's maybe lent me slightly towards him as a player and tried to defend him a little bit more. But he, yesterday, he offered, offered absolutely nothing. Nothing. He didn't chase down. He didn't press. He hardly won anything. He moaned, he complained and didn't do anything. Didn't do anything. I thought it were an absolute disgrace, to be honest. You know, in and amongst a load of disgraceful performances. But, I, yeah, I, it's rip it up and start again for me, mate. And I, I, think that, I think that it's more of an old school thing. And I think it's something that were, was really, really ignored in the recruitment is, um, you know, when you see... Like a lot of managers, they talk about characters. Do you know what I mean? If you, if Absolutely. we're not going to go and spend, any, if we're not going to go and spend any money on players, and we know that we're giving away ability, you've got to have a bit of, you've got to have oh, a bit sure. of know how. You've got to That's have a bit. Of, keeping right? Jack Robinson in team, isn't it? That's what's keeping Jack Robinson here because he's not got the ability, but he's got the attitude. 
And, and exactly, know. and it, and it does get harder because if you I looked at that Bramall Lane pitch last night, and I thought, wow, look at that, that is perfect, that is absolutely perfect. It's not perfect for us, is it? Absolute yeah. carpet for them. We don't perfect. want a carpet, do we? We don't want a carpet. No, want and a, I said, and I said, you exactly. And I said, do you remember the Man United game when we didn't have a stand and Schmeichel were in goal? I said, I, I put it on the group. Schmeichel were in goal. There was a massive blizzard, and we gave Man United yeah. the kicking of a lifetime. We went absolutely went for it. And I said, you, we, we create the perfect arena nowadays, don't we, for these slick football teams? And I don't know the football's gone a long way. I, I think that Arsenal, and Man City, and to an extent Liverpool, but more Arsenal, and Man City, the play that they that they are that they do now is the beyond anything one, we've though. beyond anything we've seen in this country for you know ever. Yeah. And football has football seen that kind of football. I don't know I'd, if I'd back them to have more desire than us, even in worse conditions. Anyway, you know that that about played as much. It's not a leveler like it should be for us. They'd, no, they'd have played around us on anything yesterday. We were awful, absolutely no. awful. Mate, yeah. anything else you want to go over before I let you go? Um, just uh, just the the wildest presser. Um, I've heard. Simon Morgan embarrassed himself, giving it, get, it, it for me, he's an embarrassment. Simon Jordan. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Simon Jordan, what did he say? We'd signed Christian Hamer. Christian Hamer. Get him on. So I haven't seen, I don't know who this Christian Hamer is or whatever his name is. He said, oh, we've got Christian Hamer. And then he, yeah. and then he, and then he bigged up the Northern fans because he said that there's more to do in the South. That's why they're not as vocal <laughs> and not as dedicated. And I thought, oh, 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 Simon, please spare us. Oh, absolute trap, rubbish, please, pal. Um, so yeah, he's got he, a personal he, thing against Wilder, though, and he he don't like Wilder at all. So he's always he got to dig in for Wilder. He has, and I, and and I think that I think I think the only thing the only thing I would say, and I know that we're we're pro Wilder a little bit, me and you, we, we agree. I think it, they aren't his players, and I think that if um if you're going to give him an opportunity to give to in to inherit this group of players who have shown inept their ineptability. Oh, ineptability is that a word? It's uh, the unexceptional you had a minute ago. <laughs> um, yeah. They've shown that they're not good enough. Okay, they're not defenders, and I think that we have to give him the opportunity to build a team. We we have to remember he built us a great team, and they were full of characters, and he picked them up from nowhere. And I think that's kind of the kind of job we're going to have to do again. Um, I agree. And the good thing is, and like we've said it before, and I don't want to be the broken record, is we have got a lot of good young players and they will get more opportunities next year if this rebuild that everyone speaks about. The fact that it's a bit of a disaster and we go down, it probably is the end for some guys who are clearly shot. They're done. You know, their their legs are gone. They might, yeah. they might want to be there. They're clear. For, for me, a lot of those lads who are going out of contract, it, we're quite lucky because we'll be able to get some of those lads will be on really big wages for our club That's and right. some of the bigger earners will be able to get hopefully two or three experienced heads and hopefully bring on some of those young players starting, as I said, two center backs, please two new center backs. If John Egan again comes back fit and starts playing and playing well, I'll accommodate John Egan because of what he's done for the club. If, if, if he can get fit and if he can if he can come back, but we start again two fresh centre backs and we fill it we we fill our team with young players who who want to who want to die for the shirt. Those of you talking about Hamer staying, of course he's staying because <laughs> he's got this huge release clause and no one's going to buy him. <laughs> true, very true. Uh, no one's going to buy him for that twenty million quid that I think we've got on his head if we, if we, if they want to have him. And we and I think you're right. In a two at the top of the pitch with some with a bit of pace and a couple of young players coming off the bench, and um, I can I can see I can see us doing better next se next season. And I want to leave it on that positive. And we've said it before. Oh, and, and, and I'm, I'm going to get I'm going to do the uh, I'm not going to be Jerry Springer. I won't I won't say that. But um, failure is simply the opportunity to begin again. This time more intelligently. So. I, no. I use quotes like that in my assembly sometimes. I'm sorry for saying saying about being a teacher again, but it's all right, Mister Mountain. But when you yeah, when you make mistakes, when you make mistakes, the most important thing, the most important thing is that you learn from them. 
And we've got to learn to buy some, to get guys who are knowledgeable about our club. Foreign foreign players are great when they come off. They are great when they come off because you can uncover a diamond for a, a third of the price. But we need, if we're going to give away ability this season, we should have bought two or three guys who had a bit of this and a little bit of this who would who would not be allowing that to happen. And I know people digging out Wilder because we, we a lot of us said it wouldn't happen under Wilder. He can't play, can he? He can't be out there. With, he, he can't put a shirt on and be on the pitch. And you can right. tell that defending, that defending at no point did anyone turn around and grab someone by and go, you've got to be touch tight there and, and sort of and show that leadership. Yeah. Please for our blaster, yeah. please for Brooks, please for Asula because they can see a good pathway at our club. And I'm glad about that. Because yeah, me too. They'll know about what the fans really want to see. Paolo, thank you, my friend. And I'll speak to no you worries. soon. Cheers, Catch mate. See you a bit. Yeah. Nice one, Man Mountain. Always a great, um, a great, some great points to discuss when when Paul comes on. Thank you, pal. Need to rebuild with quality being the first thought, not loyalty, not experience. Just focus on players who are good enough. Otherwise, we'll get outplayed every week, like we are. Uh, Rob says, clear out the Deadwood and start again next season. Our so-called big players will be staying because no one will want them on this season's performances. You're talking about your hamers there and stuff, pe- players that are still in contract. Yeah, maybe so. Maybe so. And Nell, you should never be captain. Evening, Andrew. We were outclassed, humiliated there. Fantastic. Uh, quality, fantastic and terrible performance. Gerbich is garbage. Kristen agrees. Forrest, got to be fair, you looked well out of your depth, guys. You slagged Forrest, but you got to spend in this. You've got to spend in this league, Jimmy, to compete. But I'm afraid I blame your owners for not buying in when you were promoted. I, I think that's fair to say we haven't spent enough. Absolutely right. I would, you know, the one thing we'll say about Forrest, you've had a go, haven't you? You've had a go. You've cheated, but you've had a go. Um, to be fair, that, you came in peace. So I don't mind that. Thank you for your comment, pal. Nowhere near quick enough, strong enough, or good enough. Absolutely right. Paid money for Gerbich. I know, that's absolutely right. Paid money for Gerbich, absolutely mental. He ain't no better than Wes either, and that's seen him in very limited games. Useless. Jimmy Weir's a club with the biggest laughing stock in football, says Neil. If the plan was to play like a cup tie, God help us, then plays an embarrassment to us fans and looks like Wes is better. Trust it. Well, he was put out of position so many times and apparently he was the Birmingham Player of the Year. He was the Birmingham Player of the Year. Can anybody tell me whether he was left back at Birmingham? I think he played in multiple positions at Birmingham. I think he played centre-back in a two. I think he played the left centre-back in a three at Birmingham for the majority of the time. Sometimes played at left back. But Andy the Blade believes he was purely a left back at Birmingham. Yeah, I'm telling people he said that. Uh, Matt Judge, uh, what does he do again? So, our, our recruitment is so poor. Not fit to lace John Harris or Dave Bassett's boots. Oh, is that against uh, Chrissy Wilder? Mm. The news conference was revealing, says Paul. Chris said certain players did not follow his instructions and he'll be giving their places to the youngsters. That tells me we have a fractured dressing room. I, I don't think... I think that's sort of what he said. He basically said that our blaster Brooks and Asula have given him food for thought in terms of coming on and doing really well with the performance. Um, these players, Hamer, Souza, a championship tops, no more, no less. McBurney's rubbish, let him go, don't renew, Norwood's poor. Boxcar Jackson, our sister, our system relies on wing-backs to be successful and our wing-backs are horrible. Yeah, they were yesterday, we're by, we're by our number one recruitment priority, but centre-halves have got to be the one. I'm coming to you in a minute, Dave, I can see you waiting, pal, I know you've been waiting a while. Uh, I'm fed up with being hammered when we're going to feel good again. I don't understand where the passion has gone. I oh, know, mate. I oh, know. Billy, I can't read that next comment out, I'm afraid, pal. Um, the Prince's only problem is he doesn't have the money. Not that he won't spend it, he just hasn't got the funds. Not his fault, but just unfortunate. Absolutely right, and you can understand people's frustration with that as well, as can the Prince. As the Prince has himself, because he doesn't want to be relegated. He wants to keep us in the Premier League, believe it or not. But he just hasn't got the financial muscle to do it. Um, Tim says, no, 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 I don't agree about Robbo. He's our best player. No manager would have got a result, but even a League One team would have put up more of a fight. 
Bogle poor again and again. Absolutely right. John O says Wilder is now getting the same, if not less, out of the players than Eki was. Doug says as soon as Baldock came on, he should have automatically been given the captain's armband. Absolutely right, Doug. You're in uh, Captain Baldock camp with me, pal. Recruitment is our problem, not the price or prince price. We washed away two, three years of EPL money with nothing to really show for it. Um, four times five goals shipped at home. We'll see a manager sacked at any other club. That's true, John. O. That's true. There's no getting around that. It's terrible form. Terrible, terrible form. Non Iron Blade. I can't can't blame Wilder after he inherited that squad. Our defence are completely broken and we've no midfield at all. Our defence is under so much pressure and we've no outlet to feed the strikers. Uh, Hammer Time says the defence is worse than last year's in the championship. Jimmy Foster sits in front of us. Jimmy, bang on the money, mate. Summary is absolutely right. Bar Brooks, Blaster and George, the rest can get lost. Top man. Couldn't agree more. Nailed it on the head, says Kristen. David Webster, Mr. Positive, is in the building. And listen, you'll have a few more on your side tonight. Uh, Sack Wilder and take his debris with him. He's clueless. Wow. Hammer time. No Egan. Robbo starting every week. Osborne's best link, left wing back. I think that you're saying, aren't you? That's, that's the situation that we're in. Andrew says, sorry for the rant, guys, but I'm a passionate blade and I've been going since 72. I've seen some rubbish players in my time, but I've been ruthless and... Dell release and just give most of give most of the senior players you sell release and just give up on most of the senior players. Got you now. Thank you, pal. Action location says tactics and setup were shocking. Hung trusty out to dry marking Saka. Why would Wilder get trusty to mark him? Wilder's team selection and tactics were shocking. They were, got it wrong. Got it wrong. I, I agree with that. Apart from a small manager bounce, Wilder couldn't get a tune out of a grand orchestra. Okay. Um, we have no one to get us worked up. I say bring back Billy Sharp back even then. If he doesn't play much, he will get the lads going. Not for me, Andrew. The Luton players aren't good enough for the Prem, but they're not rolling over five, six and eight nil at home. Four consecutive home games, shipping five plus goals is a record that will stand for decades. Absolutely right. Said it before, I'll say it again. Vinny Souza, if he's called Bob Smith, he'd be getting hammered. Absolutely abysmal again. One good game all season. Rubbish. Wilder should never have come back. Me and you, Jimmy, could do a better job. <laughs> I don't know about that, pal. Um, Davis in a solo worth keeping too, says Jimmy. Any word on Jebs? Seems to have gone quiet. Not looking good. Not looking good. I would I would not be banking on him being with us next season, if I'm honest. I'm going to bring in our next caller now. Dave Leary. How's Hello. it going, pal? How are you doing, mate? Not good. Not good. Oh, mate. You're supposed to be cheering me up. Oh, God. No, I don't think my moves in, mood's improved since I were uh, walking along Shoreham Street with you yesterday. <laughs> Listen, did you stay till the end? Yeah, because uh, I thought it'd be quicker getting home. There'd be less traffic if I stopped at end rather than going home. <laughs> and it's true, it was. Yeah, it was. It's straight run for us as well, to be fair. Yeah, yeah I know. Uh, God. What do you think, uh, mate? I thought we are going to feel better uh, than I've listened to everybody tonight. And, I feel <laughs> worse. <laughs> and then I thought, I'll cheer myself up and I'll look how Wednesday's getting on. And they're winning, so they'll probably stay up as well. So um, I, don't, I don't want to think yeah. about that. Um, lack oh, of leadership. Won. Oh, it's finished, has it? Yeah. yeah. Lack of leadership, I think, is on field is the biggest problem that we've got. Um, Absolutely. I, I actually think lack of, there's a bit of lack of leadership uh, off the pitch as well. And I don't necessarily mean Wilder. I think alluding to a point I made this morning on uh, on the chat that I think we need to get, we need to make changes to the structure off field because it's clearly not working. I know you said Darren's mentioned about the um, the medical team and the recruitment. We've signed players, we can't keep them fit. Uh, we've signed players in the past and then we've just seemingly let them get to the point where they can't they can't do it like they used to. 
Um, mm -hmm. We've lost. We, I remember signing, you know, when we signed George and Ender, um, you know, those sort of players we picked up at Ender contracts from other clubs who've done really yeah. good jobs in the league below. We seem to have ditched looking for anyone like that. I mean, you think about when we signed Didze, you know, Ross Barkley's probably that sort of ilk of player that we should have been all over. It's the kind of thing yeah. that in the past I think we probably would have been. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I want to see us get I want to see us spend the um the remaining weeks of the season getting off field stuff right and we have got to hit the ground running from the day the season the 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 final whistle on the final game against Tottenham the work has to start we've not got to mess around telling people when you know with these retained lists get it sorted get it out get on with it absolutely mate everybody needs to know um, don't they from from the get go from the off yeah set a statement of intent and go for it uh, and i can just about cope with the rest of the games until then, if I know that we're going to actually get stuff done, do you think? I mean, it, it, I mean, the squad being as thin as it is, it may, it may not be. But do you think that might be the last time we see Ollie Norwood? I mean, how do you, how do you recover from a twelfth-minute hook or a fifteenth-minute hook? He I've can't be happy. Loved, he's got to be raging now, with that. I've loved Ollie Norwood. I think he's one of the best midfielders that I think I've ever watched play in the United shirt uh, up until uh, about October last year. Uh, well, yeah. no, the year before, sorry. October in Championship. Um, and his form seemed to dip. Uh, and I've seen him go from being someone who would be the heart of everything good that we did going forward to being someone who looks, who's a master of looking like he's dictating a game, but he's actually doing nothing. He's a pointer, um, isn't he? Yeah. Um, and, and his passes, you know, you'd look at his number of touches he'd take or number of passes he'd make. But if you actually watched him with your eyes and what he was doing, you know, he was dropping in line with the centre halves and just playing it between them. And then he'd look for yeah. some kind of worldy of a ball uh, that would lead to nothing. So, or a no look much, pass down the line. Yeah. So, as much as um, I've loved him in a United shirt, Aaron's got him on his on one of his kits. He loves him as well. I think we've got to let, put sentimentality out of it, and we've got to say, yeah, it, 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 certainly for the rest of the season. And then, it, then it's a you know handshake and thanks very much. I think it's it, it's going to be like that with a few of them. To be honest, that's the that's the vibe that we get into in terms of what Wilder's thinking. It's going to be a completely start from scratch job, I think. And yeah, what well, that. It makes me nervous. I think it's necessary, but it makes me nervous for next season because it's like put a pin in it where you think we could finish because we, it's not guaranteed to go right with a complete real. It could be brilliant. It could be absolutely fantastic. And, you know, we get the second coming of, of Wilder and we go again, but there's also a chance that it don't quite work. And I, I don't know, mate. How are you feeling heading into next season? Uh, we can't go proverbial or bust. Financially, I think I know what you're saying. It could go either way. I think there's got to be a degree uh, of being sensible to it, yeah, um, and not just. I mean, I don't think we're going to have much money anyway. To to be quite honest with you, I struggle to see all these players we're talking about offloading. I struggle to see anyone coming in for for any of them. I mean, yeah, I just don't. I don't see it. I'm, I'm struggling. I think I don't think. I think we'll struggle with an L. He might want to go. We might be happy for him to go, but I, th I think he does um, better in a possession-based team. So I think I think if he goes to like a, you know, a Napoli or somebody, you know, one of the top foreign leagues, that, who that, have that more time sailed. on board. Yeah, ship sailed. Yeah, Napoli. Has, it's the, the, yeah, they've replaced him, aren't they? But you know, he could go to a, a decent team in France or somewhere like that. I think we'll I think we'll get decent money for an L. Um, well. But we can I think we can quite we can quite easily put together a, a team that if we can keep them fit will compete next season in the championship. But we will end up right back in exactly the same position in 12 months' time. 
Well, you've said that recently, haven't you, to us, that yeah. your concern isn't next season, yeah. it's the season after. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 the the the, the talk with you know Prince selling and whatnot. I mean, the, it's clear there needs to be investment or a sale. But Absolutely. We're not we're not hearing of rich people with you know deep pockets knocking on the on the door saying, yeah. "Where's the queue? Where's the, where are they lining yeah, up to buy there, it? If they're there and and the, the 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 offer is is sensible and right for the club, it has to happen, but. And if we can't magic these people out of thin air. That's right. That's right, mate. Absolutely right. So we've, we've got to be prepared in our minds that it's not going to happen. And it's how do we, uh, how do we sort it going forward? And Luton have shown you can get to, you can get your squad together to give yourself half a shot. Yeah. That's probably the best we can hope chance. for. Yeah. Okay, but as we've said, so many times the gap is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Yep, that's right. There's a certain video coming out about that, about financial fair play, I believe. That sounds very channel. interesting. I look forward it, to watching that. It certainly is very interesting, mate. Yeah. <laughs> a couple of dodgy lads on it, but you know, we'll see how that goes goes down. Um listen, mate, thank you for that. we we're running massively over time, but to be honest, I'm just I don't care because it's I think it's a it's a very pivotal point for the club in our history at the moment. That sounds dramatic, but I, I, we could. There's so many different connotations to what's happening. So, mate, thank you. Is there anything else you want to touch on before I let you go? No, I'm going to go and get something to eat. <laughs> Standards. All right then, mate. Standard. Speak to you soon. Cheers, Cheers mate. Tell me, mate. Cheers, Davy boy. Um, right, let's try and fire through some of your comments. John O says, McBurney trying to avoid serious injury so I can get sign, a signing on for a new club. Might be a bit of merit to that. Let's face it, next season we'll struggle with a massive clear out of Deadwood and transfer. Uh, we should work a deal out and offload Brewster signed in 2020 and given us Jack. Nobody's going to buy Brewster while he's injured, are they? Jimmy, every word you're saying tonight is very, very true. Got up for work this morning at five and I'm still fuming now up the ramble. Cheers, Michael. Thank you, pal. Recruitment. It's like a shake lucky bag and just see what falls out. I'd sack the lot if I was in charge. P45 today for him. Um, this shows how far we are behind, by the way, because Robbie's saying rather I'm a 4 0 down at half time. So that tells everybody how, how behind I am because all games are now full time. So I'm an hour behind in comments. I do apologize. Some of this stuff should appear in a textbook, how little football fans know about football. <laughs> all right, okay, okay. Uh, Bogle's the winger all day long. I absolutely agree with that. Um, wouldn't be surprised if Wilder says I'm off at the end of the season when he realises there's no money. No, Wilder won't walk. Not a chance this time. Andrew Sharp, who I believe is a Forest fan. You don't want Steve Cooper. <laughs> I don't, pal, but I know there's already been a shout from Steve for him. Hi, Jimmy. Evening, Luke. I think it's time for a change. Change formation for next season to wingers and one striker. This isn't working anymore. Teams can easily suss us out, and we saw glimpses of that last season. I know what you're saying, mate. I think... I don't know. I don't know. I, I like the 3-5-2. I like the identity that, we, that it brings. I think, depending on how you play, it can be successful. If Having said that, if there's ever a time to change... It's now, isn't it, with the clear out that's come in? Uh, yeah, Robbie says that's that's how we have been playing. Best we played under while, says Jono, is 4-3-3 with BBD and McAtee out wide. I disagree. I think we've been better in the 3-5-2 personally. I think Baron Diaz forces us to play with wide men, which hasn't always suited us. Might be wrong. Contract situation won't be helping morale. While there needs time to fully rebuild, I completely agree. Completely agree with that. Um, Paul says Anel would have been sent off in the build up to the fourth goal if they hadn't scored yet again the player blew past him and his reaction was to pull the shirt I can do that for 30 grand a week <laughs> problem is the prince says happy chappy anyone who thinks otherwise, otherwise or otherwise is kidding themselves this Oliver Norwood starting a Premier League is pathetic sadly I don't see a real player in Brooks alright I really hope I'm wrong but he's missing the fight and doesn't offer much from a production standpoint oh, I think he's quite He's one of our few flair players, to be honest. So we we differ slightly there, pal, but it's all about opinions, mate. Lowest I've ever felt as a blade has been 
We're a sinking ship. We need fresh ideas. We've got no direction currently. Would love a sporting director, director of football to come in and give fresh ideas. I've got a video coming out that I've already recorded. I think it's out on Patreon at, at the moment. Fixing Chef United. And a few of these ideas have come out. And now, I don't know whether I'd do a different video because I'm that raging about everything, but it's a little bit tongue-in-cheek as well. Please don't think I know all the answers because I certainly don't. Um, wasn't long ago we were getting smashed by Gillingham and Wilder turned us around. He can do the same again next season. My dad said exactly the same to me last night in terms of, listen, this this used to happen against Gillingham. Um, so, yeah, there's, there's always tomorrow in there. Illiman was 21 when he first played and lacked end product and physical attributes. Absolutely right. Fantastic ramble tonight. Thank you, Michael. Much appreciated. When things go wrong in anything, not just football, everyone wants someone to blame. Is just the circumstances. Not enough cash to complete, compete in the Prem. At least 100 million, probably much more. Absolutely right, Tim. We can't keep changing managers, says Dino. Last time we did that, we ended up in the first division. Stick with Wilder for a championship season. Absolutely right. The only positive from last night is, at least it wasn't eight. <laughs> I thought it was going to be at some point. Um, Steve talks and presents himself really well. That's Steve Marsden, our first caller. Should be a regular on the channel. It was at one stage. He then left to, not a regular on the channel, to be fair, but he's been on a couple of bits on the channel. He then left to set up his own business, which sounds like it's going very well. So well played, pal. And he's back now. He's very much in, in the fold again, involved in... The Ramblers group and always up for conversations with the Ramblers for coming on and joining in with creating content. So absolutely right. Completely agree. Don't know how you end up having three of the past five years in the Prem and end up in the position we're in. Little to no assets, no money. We're in danger of going down again, in my opinion. There's a massive rot. Yeah, it needs to stop, doesn't it? It needs to, The rot needs to stop. I can accept us having little funds, but not wasting it. Quality over quantity. Jimmy, how long before the crowd starts singing? You don't know what you're doing. Will CW stay or go again? I think he'll stay. I think he'll stay. And I don't think there'll be any, any sort of chance like that. I'd be I'd be disappointed if there were. He should have been rebuilt beginning of the season and tried to give us a chance in the premises, Bill. I agree with Steve. All I want is that we finish above Burnley. Looking forward to next season. Let's be, be real. The club's not good enough to be in the premiership. Absolutely right. Be nice to finish above Sander, wouldn't it? Who made that move for the betterment of his career? We'll all have about twelve. Con we'll have about twelve contracted players at the end of the season. Ridiculous. We need to start at the top, sell, and let Chris have two windows to recycle the squad. Absolutely right. Uh, Defense is league one at best, says Jimmy. Absolutely. Agree with Steve's last point. If Forest get a big points deduction and go down, I predict there'll be an administration within two years. Would the Blades have been happy to take that risk? No, you never risk the club's future, do you? Evening, Keith. Do you think our defenders play too narrow and give opposition? Oh, you've cut yourself off there, pal. Do I think we play too narrow? I think we do at times. I think that's why we switched to a five yesterday and tried to sort of double up on the wingers once we knew that we were getting overrun. And it sort of steadied the ship a little bit. You know, we're 3-0 down playing four at the back in 15 minutes. Um, squad looks scary for next season. All the goals are going to gonna go. Archer, McAtee and Burton Diaz. One of the reasons we're so bad defensively is there's nothing going the other way. Scaring teams. Good point. Joe Worrell for captain. We need a rebuild at the back. I'll have Joe Worrell tomorrow. I'll have a, I would have him. Absolutely. When you say... Angel, um, Anel, Hamer, Souza won't play in the championship. Can you really see a Prem team buying them on current form? Mm, I can see somebody buying them. There'll always be a market for. I, I don't. I, I don't actually understand why, but I think Anel, Anel will move. I'll be amazed if Anel's with us next season. Hamer and I think we sell Hamer or Souza. Um, hi, pal. In my opinion, a bit harsh on Trusty. Saka has skinned better players than him. Why start Trusty there when LaRucci or Osborne is on the bench? Because LaRucci is... <laughs> oh. Yeah, I don't think he fancies LaRucci and I don't blame him. Osborne, I think he realised. You're right. He's he's hung Trusty out to dry a little bit as a left-back. I don't think he's a natural left-back. But that's what he chose to do. Evening all. 
Just say as a Forest fan, your fans don't deserve the crap that's been served up. I watched the game live. I actually felt for your fans. It's clearly lacking quality. Good luck. Thank you, Jolly Ollie. Very much appreciated, pal. Always appreciate you coming in peace. Evening, Jimmy. Do you think our defenders play too narrow, giving the opposition all too much room to play? And <laughs> Keith, you've cut yourself off again, mate. Rob always league one, says Jimmy. I I agree. Well, I think I think he's a championship player. Um and the fact that he's our best defender at the minute shows how woeful we are. No, and I am Blade. Thank you very much for your support, pal. Very much appreciated. As for McBurney, he turned his back on an Arsenal defender instead of closing him down near the halfway line. Not good enough. Up the blades, up the ramble. We go again Saturday. Come on, you red and white wizards. Wilder to blame for our game plan last night. Can't can't say any other. Absolutely right. Uh, <laughs> right, come on then, Keith. Third time lucky. Uh, evening, Jimmy. Do you think our defenders play too narrow and give the opportunity and room to play and put the crosses in? And it sounds like you're blaming the keeper for all the goals. I'm not blaming the keeper for all the goals. I just don't, I, the keeper does not convince me at all, and he hasn't done since he's come in. If I'm honest, but you've got to give, try and give him a chance. How many goals does he need to ship before we sort of start making his mind up that he might not be good enough? Especially when you look, Victor Hansen shipped for tonight in the championship. So I'm not saying he's the answer to all our prayers. I prefer Mike Cooper personally at Plymouth. But he's, we, I just think there's better options out there personally. People that we know, we know what we're getting. We're not, we're not expecting to sign the next Peter Schmeichel or Dean Henderson, but just somebody that we can rely on. Regardless of not playing for the badge, it's Wilder's tactics and game plans and training sessions. He's leading this group of players, so what's going wrong behind the scenes? Good point, Scott. Good point. That's why Wilder needs a transfer window, says Ricky. I agree. I think he's been he's working with what he's been given into. Let's be right. I hope Wilder shows this ramble to the players tomorrow. I hope he don't. I don't want Jack Robinson after me. Well, thank you, pal. Boxcar Jackson, thank you, pal. Very much appreciated. Thank you for your support. If those that have joined tonight want to drop their um, numbers on our uh, YouTube page, then we'll get you in the group. Um, oh, Chirac. Chalk and cheese, black and white. That's why you're looking at third or fourth consecutive year in the Prem. Well done, your owner. Great bloke. Loves his club. Uh, is Chirac Forest in disguise, do we think? Mark Robbins is a great shout. Says uh, James Foster would be one of the one for me if Wilder left. Bringing Billy Sharp next season as a player manager, no chance, Al. Come on, we'll show some real leadership and commitment. No, he's not getting in for Hull. Can't be in a promotion chasing team a year on. This is all on the Prince, says Liam. Multiple failings through the club on the pitch, recruitment, conditioning, etc. The Prince makes these decisions from the top. Maybe so. Maybe so, and if he's now looking to rectify those, and listen, it's it's long gone, on it as well. But is that a start? At least if we're looking at changing things, then is that a positive? Five mil for Trusty, what a waste! Youngsters need to play now too. I go Gerbich, Baldock right back, Anel at right centre back, Trusty at centre left, centre back Robbo, oh, oh Robbo at left back, Arblaster. At right centre mid, Davis or Souza CDM, Brooks left centre mid, Brereton Diaz went fit or Bogle at left wing. All right, okay. At Burnley at striker and Macca right wing based on a 4 3 3. Oh, don't know. Don't know. Okay, I'm going to try and spin on a little bit because I've still got people waiting. I'm not going to be much longer because we are over. No leaders at the back apart from George. We were saying the same, weren't we, yesterday, James? It stand yesterday. <laughs> Souza is the Brazilian Harper. Great comment. Love that. Love that. Jimmy goalkeeping is shocking. My daughter is a 14-year-old goalkeeper and plays a level above her age. She's ready to come over from Australia and show these lads passion, heart and loyalty to the shirt. Get her over, Johnny. Get her over. Get her in goal. The Man Mountain getting some some nods of approval, as per. Dave Bateman, and now the worst captain I've ever seen. Thinks he's above us and should be playing for a bigger club. Absolutely terrible. He's been consistently one of our worst players this season. Jimmy and Paul need to start a podcast, lol. I'm up for it. I'm up for all like that. I don't think Brooks is ready for the Premier League. Probably right, pal. Probably right. It's a bit early for 
a lot of these young lads into it. Roy says, Paul is spot on. Bang on the money. The players don't care. Only Robbo and George care. Shocking. Big clear out needed. Let's not forget that Pratt Holgate. Abysmal signing when we could have had Worrell. Oh, if only we could have had Worrell. I wish we could have. Evening, Susan. Hey, Jimmy and all the Ramblers. Does anyone think the players had decided that they were going to lose and they were trying not to get injured or suspended? It's it, You can't rule it out, can you? Somebody's already mentioned that, Susan. I think... Keith says everything at the... Oh, I can't click on it now. Everything that the club needs resetting and get the scouting system sorted out. It's probably more on consistency and hopefully that comes with maturity and experience. But Bernie is woeful. Says my dad in disguise. Uh, we can't keep the ball and can't afford to give the ball back to teams who move the ball quickly. We are mobile like Arsenal. And a mobile like Arsenal, Brian, even Bournemouth, as it's constant pressure for the defence. Okay. Right. Wilder wanted Holgate, says Sean. I know your opinions, Seanie Boy, who's in our chat. Absolutely, he did. I don't mind Holgate, you know. I don't mind Holgate. He made a stupid decision. Um, but I don't think he's... I don't think he's as bad as people are making out. That's just my opinion. Right. Sorry to have kept you waiting, pal. Brad, how's it going, bud? Are you there? Are you still there? Or have you nodded off while you were waiting? Because I appreciate you've been waiting a while. No. Yes. No. I'll give you a chance to come back. If not, I'm going to welcome Ollie in. Ollie, how's it going, pal? Am I blurred? It's not going well. It's not going well, mate. Sharp for gaffer? Yes. Yes, please. <sighs> really? Really? Him, him, Jags and, and Morgs, that'll do for me. Oh dearie me, mate! What are we gonna do? What are we gonna... would you would you seriously clear out everybody, including Wilder? Would you start again for next season? I would absolutely. Really? Everyone, even board. Why not? <laughs> Just clear them all out. Deal with it. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. If we all right, let's start with the obvious place then. If you don't think Wilder's the man, which I think I've seen you commenting a few times about it, to be fair. So sticking to your guns, who do we go for? Who do we go for? Do we seriously go for Billy or have you got a, a, a more sort of experienced manager in mind that you'd, you'd like to see? Uh, oh dear. Put me on the spot. I, no, I, I would go for Billy. Would you? You'd give him the reins and see how he gets on? I think we should have brought him in in January. You know, he might not play, but he can certainly get something out of players. You, you'd have brought him in January as a manager, as the manager? Yeah, I probably would have. Right. Wow. We're, we're, we're already down. Why not try something? I, d I didn't think, when we brought Wilder in, I didn't think we were already down. Listen, you were looking terrible, and we're certainly down now. But I've always thought, you know, if we could, if he could have turned it around or sparked the odd performance and got on a little bit of momentum, I thought it were there to give us half a chance at least to staying up. And, and I know that Wilder believed he could do it. I know that from, you know, discussions I've had with people close. So, anyway, mate, um, what needs to happen now? What needs to happen now? Do you change anything now? Do you bring all the youth kids in? Do you think that, that wastes some yeah. or ruins them? Do you? Okay. Bring all youth players in. That I, I want to make one point quickly. Go for it, mate. I know you're a Wilder fan, and I know I, I do like me Heckingbottom, but Heckingbottom lost three games five or more now. Wilder's lost three in a row at home and Heckingbottom was the problem. You know, so I I don't know. That's my point. <laughs> that okay. I don't think Heckingbottom was a problem. I, I think, I, I would say the, the recruitment has been woeful. I don't yeah. think that's the only reason. Um, I, d I don't think Hecky got the best out of the team, but what you have to say is neither is Wilder. I can't argue that Chris Wilder's getting the best out of this. How can I? We've just lost yeah. like four games on spin by five or more, and it's yeah. it's not working. And I think we need a reset, complete reset of the club. So completely agree with you, pal. Completely agree. Anything more you want to Hello, Mr. Abdullah. Um I'd also like to say about you know his sack taking bottom for performances. Um are you watching now? I, I, 
I don't yes, start. Right. He may well, he may well see this. We've gone longer than usual, so he may switch stuff, but it, he may well see this. Yeah. One final Thank thing you, is, I, I think he said that his wage cap's about 40, 40 grand in tip for a player. Has he mentioned wage caps? I, I don't know. It's something like that. But if, okay. if he expects us to stay in the league, then. Yeah, we 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 haven't invested anywhere near enough. Then, yeah. Let's be right. Let's be right. No, I completely agree with you, Ollie. Thank you for calling, mate. Sorry, I made you wait on for so long, but um, we've had loads to get through tonight. So I'll catch you soon. All right, buddy. Did a bit, mate. <laughs> and I can see somebody else who's popped into the the chat. We'll we'll see if I get to you or not. Um, but Brad's back. Let's welcome Brad in because we just tried to get him in. Uh, are you on? How's it going, pal? You okay? Can you hear me? I can hear you, mate. I can hear you now. I can oh. hear you before. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Really it's, it's, uh, had a bit of a meltdown, apparently. That's all right. Um, I'm being all right. I think How are you, been... mate? Um, it wasn't eight. <laughs> it was about the eight. only positive. Um, I did eight. think it. I thought it was going to be double figures. To be fair. Um, if they I didn't did. take Saka off, I think they probably would have. Yeah, um, I agree. And Martinelli didn't get injured. Yeah, I, yeah. I think so. They were killing Which us. Which showed they? just how good they really are. But, um, yeah, well, I, mean, I did want to say a bit, because I wasn't going to call in originally until I think it was Steve earlier um, pointed out and he, he said um, about identity. Yeah, and we had that the five three two under Wilder that was our identity, and then we lost it, and we were sort of trying to find it. And then with Hecky and the sort of the going through the two tens that we did and all this, I think really the identity was Illumin and I. I think the, I mean, I can remember, and it was actually brought on a bit by a social media post by the actual Sheffield United account of us beating Tottenham. Yeah. And I scoring that goal last year. If I remember when we were on TV, his face was plastered everywhere before the game. You know, they pop him up and say, The danger man, Sheffield United, danger man, eliminate and die, X amount of goals and X amount of games. Yeah. And you and uh, sat at home or, or um, watching the game, you would feel something when that happened. You know, it's a bit like Palace when we played Palace a few weeks ago, or was it last month or whatever? And yes. their team was dreadful. I'm, I'm, it was. I mean, they had that Will Hughes who couldn't make a pass. They had their centre-backs looked as bad as Trusty and NL. Yeah. But they had Eze and Elise who yeah, were just ripping us to right. shreds the entire game. Yeah, the, that's right. I feel a bit for the teams that we played last season now with having and die. Yeah, we must have. Do you think, do you think, I mean, it's very easy to say now in hindsight, but do you think if we'd have kept Illiman, he could have been our Eze slash Elise and been that difference maker? I know a lot of people very, do. Very easily. Um, it's not saying okay. stone. I think um, he was that good. And, the thing was that he suited us. He was, he was, he wasn't new to the system. It's not like Palmer, who's come in, he's not known the system, or uh, Archer or Traore, who they don't know the system. Yeah. Good players, but you're throwing them into an entirely different way of playing. Whereas Endai, he'd been with us for three, four years, knew in and out what his role was. And if anything, yeah. it gave us, I mean, like last night. The, the ball, if it bounced to our centre-halves, even if they had three or four seconds to compose themselves, they just shoot it. <laughs> they really, I mean, they're all guilty of it. You can't pick on one specifically. No, but, I mean, with McBurney up front, it was, you know, you boost it up to him and it comes straight back. So I can see why. I can't, I can't talk it, about McBurney, mate. I can't. I can't. I'll, I'll get cut off. Somebody will it, it, be monetized. Me. Talk about McBurney, on Yeah. It's just the best way to describe it is is heartbreaking that we were so close with, I mean, last season with the team we had to this yeah. season, the difference. And even one of the biggest things that I've, I've only just thought about is I have this season's home shirt 
I bought it right at the start of the season, just after McAtee signed back, and I had McAtee on the back, and I just thought I've got it's the only Premier League seat shirt that I have from us, and it doesn't even have our own player's name on the back. Oh mate, yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Brad, thank you, mate. I'm sorry I kept you waiting so long, pal. It's no worries, got, mate. Good listening. We're massively over time tonight, but it's worth it, isn't it? You know, we're all we're, yeah. we're mourning, we're grieving for our Premier League status. So. Exactly. Thank you, pal. Appreciate it, and I'll speak to you soon. Indeed. Cheers, See mate. You, mate. See you in a bit, mate. Top man. Cheers, Brad. Right, this is the Chef United channel. We talk about all things Chef United. Sometimes we get infiltrated by the enemy, as we know. This is a controversial call, and I want to reassure you all, I've got my finger on the trigger if this goes south. But I'm going to welcome in from FFP TV, Wolfie. Controversial? What's so controversial, mate? Welcoming you on to a Chef United phone-in when you well, are clearly... Well, thank you, mate. Well. As a guest here, I should feel, you know, comfortable, you, mate. You should. You should. But you would also feel like you're in enemy territory. Because you're here to, you're here, you're here. To I'm, I'm just that. here to to lighten the mood for you. Look, you all sound depressed. I thought I'd come okay. in here and give you some cheer, mate. Okay, mate. Okay, so yeah. go on then. Cheer no, up then. But I'm interested in you. Chance. You know the the five stages of grief. Where are you now? <laughs> <laughs> well, you got you got denial, anger. What's the next one? Bargaining. You've been in the bargaining stage for ages, yeah, mate. Yeah, Surely yeah, you're yeah, out yeah. of that. Yeah, yeah you that, moved though. on. Yeah, what, what was I, next? Depression. I got... I've been, yeah, I've been there. I, I'm I'm <laughs> coming out of there. Is it like acceptance? The last acceptance one? is the final stage, mate. Is that, yeah, that's where I am, mate. That's where I am. So yeah, listen, we are down. We are down, and we we are mourning that this evening. We are talking about how terrible we were and how far off it we are. But as we have a resident Forest fan. Forest or Spurs? I, I'm never quite sure. Is it? Where are you getting Spurs from? Is it, ain't your family Spurs? And I'm a brother. All oh, right. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, are you concerned? Are you concerned about Nottingham Forest and which division you're going to be playing in next season? Nope. We're good, mate. We're good. We have owners that spend money. You know, we don't have too these... much. Too much we... money. We, we don't have we don't have the only fake rich Arab in the world controlling us, mate. How did you end up with an Arab with no money, man? That's how I can't get my head around, man. That, that just it just cracks me up every time, man. How how? And then you want to complain about FFP? You don't even know what FFP is, by the way, bro. Why are you always going on about FFP? Because Forest will do anything they can to cheat their way to the top or try right, and Jim, stop, stop. before you make self look silly it's PSR for a start right we're not talking FFP yeah. here profit and sustainability okay. rules yeah 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 it's not FFP yeah okay, so, so, so okay. I, I know I know you're a uh, Kieran Maguire boy I know don't worry about uh, that I know we're all over that shout out to Kieran shout out so if, we, if we put to, side, to the side that you are currently being investigated for cheating as a club and are going to get a points deduction for, for cheating um where do we stand on buying a former referee so I can nudge all his mates and sort of say, "Come on, be fair to Forest." Oh, I'm not. Forrest. I'm not down with the Clattenburg thing. I don't see the point. Are you not? But you know what? Weren't you the one pushing brown envelopes earlier in the season when everything were sort of? How, I can use brown envelopes with an ex-ref. If we'd bought a current ref, then yeah, I'd be up for that. Yeah, oh, I'd do right, a man new okay. job, right? Well, what's yeah. an ex-ref gonna do, mate? What's an ex-ref gonna do? You know, but it's the Sheffield the United, league. mate. We need to talk Sheffield United here because go on then, go it, on then. It, it's gone beyond rivalry to being hilarious to like half a percent of me thinking, "How are you lot watching this crap, man?" <laughs> Seriously, I'm now watching Sheffield United matches as entertainment. Like, if Forest aren't playing. The next team I'm looking at is Sheffield United because there's some interesting records, Jimmy. I mean, you beat Derby's record. Well done, finally. Yeah, we were worried for a second. But now you're tagging on to the other records. I'm getting worried. Minus 69 goal difference. What are we saying here, man? Are you going to break that or not? Why are you so bothered about what we're doing? I'm bothered Why about you what you're going to do about Derby, mate. Derby, what, give us some reassurances that you're not going to break the minus 69. We've beat Derby's record. Don't worry about that. We've beat Derby's record. No, no, they've got Listen, two. 
Minus 69 goal difference, mate. Are you not worried? The way you're no, leaking them, man. No, we're not worried, mate. You sure? We're not worried. Should we clip this? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah? You can clip what you like. <laughs> what, what you want you now? Like. Is it minus 50, 60? I can't keep up, mate. I don't know, mate. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I've stopped looking, to be honest. The goal difference went a long time ago. I just well, think we just need what, to get though. one more point than Burnley. That's all we need. I'll, I'll tell you what, mate. I'll tell you what. You guys are getting value for money at your Bramall Lane, aren't you? You're guaranteed goals. Wolfie. It ain't, it ain't going to be a dry match there, is it? Wolfie, it's been great seeing you, mate. <laughs> <laughs> when you beat the drop back? Is it, do we have I don't to know. You tell the boys win? to free themselves up, mate. We've got a lot to talk about. Yeah. I'm, I'm done. Yeah, we'll have to wait for win, I think, don't we, to get back on there and then we'll... well Monday see. it is then, mate. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Speak to you soon. See you later, Jimmy. See you later, mate. Bye. What can, what can you do? Unbelievable. Um, right, we are getting to the end now, thankfully. We've gone more than 90, haven't we? Uh, only just tuned in late, but yesterday's performance was abysmal, says Mori. Clearly not good enough for the league. I personally think these players will struggle next season. I agree, mate. I think a, a lot of them have got to go. Great players don't necessarily make great managers. Look at Rooney. Billy would need his coaching badges and five years' experience before consideration. I don't think Billy's a realistic shout. And it's, it's one of them, isn't it? It's one of them. Um, oh, Paul says, Chef Swindon, we're minus 100. This plum knows nothing. Love that. Love that. We've got one last caller to get on before we call it a night. Lee, good evening, pal. How are you doing? Oh, good, mate. How's you? I'm okay, mate. I'm okay. It's been better after talking it through a little bit and, you know, we'll dust ourselves down and we'll we'll see what Saturday brings. But, yeah, what do you want to talk about, pal? It's just, it's just depressing this up, Wolfie, to a proper wind-up, like. <laughs> I know he is, mate. I know he is. I'm going to give him his, his little bit of... I go in his channel and do the same to him from time to time, so it's only fair that... Like, he's... They are in no position to take Mickey out of anybody, but we neither are we, are we? So it's no, one of them. We're definitely a... not, mate. It's it's dismal this season, like um it's been shocking. I just want to know um who you would actually keep when we actually go down. <clears throat> I, I would not a lot of them to be honest. And I have got a video coming out about this, but I'm not I'm not against sort of sharing the obvious ones. I think we should be doing everything we can to keep George Baldock, and it worries me that I don't think we are. Um, I don't think we'll. I don't think we'll keep him. Um, I genuinely think he'll go. Um, I do with a lot of them. Um, I can see an L going definitely. Um, he just does not look at himself whatsoever. I, I would be looking to keep John Egan. I think John Egan's a leader at the back. I don't think he's a natural like leader in terms of a captain, but I think he organises well. And I think certainly in the championship, he's earned the right to go again. So other than that, in terms of the players out of contract, there's not many more that I'd look to keep, to be honest. I I'm happy mm -hmm. to start again with the younger players, players like Sam Curtis, who we've brought in as well to, to give him a go. As I say, I think we should be doing everything we can to get Baldock in. And then we need to spend some money to strengthen, and that might be more of a challenge than than is obvious at the minute. But one of them things. Isn't it? You see, this is the thing, though. Um, I, I just don't think we have a midfield whatsoever. Um, there's no one really tracking back, marking up, and then there's no outlet whatsoever. Um, and like, I know you're saying about McBurney as well. Like, I'm not a big fan of him either, but he had nothing, nothing being pinged up to him whatsoever. Um, we can't even get the ball up the pitch, which is the biggest problem. I, I well, it's, it's an interesting. To, I understand what you mean. I think we need to settle on a style of play first and foremost, because if you, you're yeah. we're either going to utilize wingers going forward or we're not, and, and if we are, then let's get some decent wingers in the squad. If we're going to settle on a similar formation to what we've done historically, which is having like three mid, mid center midfielders and using the wing backs as wide men then you need to establish your three. And I think at the moment we want Vinny Souza to be a part of that. I don't think he's he's done the business. Gus Hamer will be a part of that somehow. And Lee's just gone, but maybe you can still hear me, mate. Gus Hamer will be a part of that going forward in the championship. And we're trying to find that third one as well. But if one of those goes, which I think Souza will go, I think it'll end up being Oli Arblaster, 
Andre Brooks. I think midfield, we're okay. I think we've got depth. Tom Davis to come in. We're allowed, we're able to make decisions on players like Norwood, even Osborne, as to whether we keep them because I think we're okay in centre midfield. He's right, is Liam, what he says. We're not, the ball isn't going from back to front quickly at all. One long ball up to McBurney, he's going to lose it every time against bigger, stronger defenders, like Paul was saying earlier. So it's tough. It's t There's no easy solution. But where do we go when we're absolutely rock bottom? Morale is on the floor. Confidence is shot. We've gone nearly two hours tonight, and I want to thank everybody for staying with me. If everybody's liked the video, that would do us a huge favour. And for those of you that aren't already, please do subscribe. Thank you to our new Ramblers that have joined tonight. Look forward to catching up with you in the chat. Hopefully it's made you feel a little bit better. It's been a bit cathartic for me, if nothing else. Um, yeah, I'm sure now that we've got it out of our system a little bit, we'll still be peeved and it'll still sting, but we'll dust ourselves down and I'll be back for the warm-up, looking forward to Bournemouth. And then we've got a bit of a break where we've already got some content planned and some already filmed and some more to come that will hopefully take his mind off what's happening in the current season a little bit and, you know, got some good ideas that I'm really keen to for you guys to see and see what you think. So... Thank you again, everybody, for your time. Very much appreciate it. Thank you to all our callers, old and new. But for now, come on, you red and white wizards. Up the blade. Hey,